you're a Taiwanese fisherman in the year 1662, back when pirates were on the earth. You're walking along the shore when you spot a shipwreck. Inside you find five mysterious statues, images of young scholars who died a violent, early, bloody death. These are plague god statues. What do you do? Run! Today, we're talking about one of the most famous ghost ships of all time that nobody really knows about. But before we begin, please do me a favor and please just poke that subscribe button right in the eyeball. Hailey recently found a channel covering toilets and urinals with 5,000 videos, but it has four times more subscribers than us. And I'm not even offended, they do a lot of work filming toilets, but I am going to declare war. So please help join the war effort and flush toilet fan number one by subscribing. This is how urban legends are made. Ghost ships are horrifying vessels with no living crew, and they drift on the ocean until they sink or beach themselves on a shore somewhere. They also are a terrible movie, never watch Ghost Ship. One example is those lovable North Korean ghost ships that float around East Asia that we hear about all the time. And they're usually empty, but they can even be filled with decomposing corpses, which is terrifying, but technically passes the no living crew check. It's a ghost ship. Ghost ship? Stumbling upon ghost ships during a fun beach day makes you wonder what unknown terrors could be waiting in the vast, infinite expanse of the ocean. And the answer is plague gods. So in 1662, plague gods sailed the ocean blue. That's a classic American rhyme. Taiwan has often found itself the recipient of cargo ship sized ghost ships, like actual cargo ships that have beached themselves. And it's pretty eerie, like what had dozens of souls on board is suddenly found empty, hitting some rocks somewhere on a beach with rotting food and a rusted out hole. 696 is just uh, about two kilometers off the coast of uh, Taichung. Since ancient times, people have been terrified of disease. In fact, if you're an American, you've played the Oregon Trail and found literally every decision in that game causes someone to die of cholera. Life is brutal. And it was particularly brutal to the Chinese immigrant communities starting colonies in Taiwan around 400 years ago. The Qing Dynasty colonists of Taiwan actually wrote, This year, we moved inward, surrounded and defeated the Aborigines. We started to cultivate the land. Fording rivers and climbing mountains, we faced thousands of perils. And on top of all the suffering, the soldiers endured came disease, which spread to such an extent that only 27 men in the entire 500 person camp remain unaffected. Kinda, kinda sucked. Taiwan was described actually in their writings as Shui Tu Bufu, which literally means unable to cope with the land and water. But I asked my Taiwanese friend about it today and they actually says it means an uncomfortable place that can give you diarrhea. So like Little Caesars is Shui Tu Bufu. Part of me looks at it and I think that this has no reason to exist. So disease was thought by many in ancient China to be caused by spiritual beings known as Wang Ye. And they fall into three broad categories. They could be evil spirits, tragic historical figures that became kind of ghosts, or righteous gods of judgment. Today, we're specifically talking about the Wang Ye stemming from those malevolent spirits and premature death. We usually see Wang Ye developing from ghosts or spirits that won't leave, or young scholars who die violent, horrific deaths. This is a tragic mixture of youth and opportunity and lost potential and unexplained violence, and it's the perfect recipe for spooky, spooky skeletons. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Like the story we have from the Tang Dynasty. There's five young scholars and they fill their imperial exams and they're living in an inn and they swear to be brothers basically together. And at night, they all overhear plague gods planning to poison five wells throughout the region. And knowing they can avert the tragedy, these heroic five young men each jump into a specific well to commit suicide by drowning so people know the wells are poisoned. I mean it well, cause of you I fell, you put me down. The jury's kind of out as to why they couldn't just say don't drink the water, but it, it was like 1100 years ago, so there's probably more to the story. The townsfolk actually pull up the bodies and they see poisoned corpses with different colored faces and they don't dare to drink the water. They're like, oh, this was actually a poisoned well. And word spreads of this virtuous sacrifice and you see them become Wang Ye and get worshipped over time. But it's not really as simple though as these stories suggest, you know, like with these happy 
Huang Ye's spirit strolling around the afterlife being like, so virtuous, guys. I'd do that again. Taoises don't even like to refer to Huang Ye as demons because they're afraid of what's gonna happen. So you don't see kind of that pure reverence for them. Instead, there's this secret ingredient to the Wang Ye. Fear. Wang Ye often develop as communities experience visions and possessions, and they're trying to stop disease in a pandemic. So the community tries exorcism and magic and talismans, and the problem ends up going unresolved. It's actually been observed that cultures who have a demon or a spirit that they can't exercise or get rid of, they eventually take a different approach. They're like, we gotta solve this problem somehow. Can't beat them, join them. So they start to worship them. And in folk religion, worship often gives you some semblance of control over a spiritual being. So it's the natural conclusion. So Wang Ye worship developed and it seems a bit more like extortion from this dark entity than you know, a harmonious relationship. This is what happens when you listen to the voices of the underworld. They crawl into your soul and rot you from the inside. The anthropologist Paul Katz said, In a way, the Wang Ye lie on a plane between that of a ghost and a god. Once ghosts feared and despised, now treated as deities and offered sacrifice. They differ from more standard Taoist and Buddhist deities in that they're known only by their surnames and rarely perform any positive functions such as bringing rain, aiding in battle, or helping conceive a male child. The festivals dedicated to them include both entertainment for them in the forms of banquets and opera, treatment according to gods, and entrapment through Taoist charms on a boat, which is either floated out to sea or burnt, clearly exorcistic in nature. In practice, Wang Ye statues would be wined and dined by a community and then chucked onto a boat known as a Wang Chun, and then that's cast out to sea. It's, it's kind of an odd relationship, but this practice became very common in southern Taiwan. So these boats basically became floating ghost ships, carrying the vessels of demons, gods, and violently murdered scholars. And Taiwan being fairly close to regions practicing the king boat sort of festivals, or Wang Chuan, was the recipient of the world's scariest message in a bottle. So ships landed here over and over again, and this resulted in lots of statues and temples and gods reaching the shores of this very scared religious immigrant community struggling with the brutal reality of colonizing Taiwan. Everybody's dying, you know, like, well, at least the plague god statues are arriving. It also might explain why they really love the boat fires here. Like, they really love setting boats on fire. So we started this video with a true story from 1662 of this boat being found on a shore filled with plague gods. Well, that fishing community took the five statues that washed up on shore, and they actually began to worship them. The story goes that these five statues represented five young, tragic, scholarly musicians killed by dark magic. In fact, the boat actually arrived with all their like historical records and stuff, so people could put it together pretty easily. Despite that, they're actually often confused with those Tang Dynasty youth who drowned in those poisoned wells. Possibly because a lot of the Wang Ye come in groups of three and five. They're like a plural sort of god. So the community built some sort of a poor man's shrine for them, maybe a small hut or some place where the plague gods could go. And perhaps to their horror, worshiping the plague gods actually started bringing great success. And if you know anything about folk religion, it's very quid pro quo. So if you have these plague gods and all of a sudden you're getting a lot of success, you're like, I gotta do something about this. So it demanded a real temple, but the community didn't actually have the resources to build one. So they decided to play what I'd consider the world's most horrifying version of hot potato. And they put the five statues on a boat and sent them back out to the ocean. And be like, go to Southern China, you plague gods. On the off chance that this does not go well for me, I would like it noted here and now that I am fully prepared to believe in whatever I must so that I may be welcomed into that place where all the goody goodies get to go, savvy? But only this time, the statues actually kept drifting back to the original spot where they were found. So the natural conclusion, right? You send the plague gods out and they're like, I'm coming back home! was that they didn't want to depart. They were unwilling to. So word spread and they actually became widely known throughout Taiwan. And the original temple started to flourish. And now it's been 360 years and the five Wang Ye are regularly celebrated with a massive festival. And that temple is actually home to a 405 kilogram golden steel worth 600 million NTD. And it's known as the most spectacular steel in the world, which is a weird title, but I'll allow it. So does Christianity have anything like a Wang Ye? Sort of. It's compare and contrast time! Biblically, sickness can come from a variety of places. Immoral deeds, demons, the judgment of God. But it's all rooted in the actions of one man, thousands of years ago, that little scamp Adam, our own little plague bringer. So Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. 
Death and disease, biblically, are a very spiritual thing. Genesis speaks of this perfect world created by God without death. But when the first man, Adam, decided to sin against God, death entered the world. And unfortunately, the apple doesn't fall very far from the Adam. Humanity is a group of evil, sinful people, and we have no real power over sickness. You gotta wonder why God pours all his love into something so messy and weak ridiculous. You can cure the cold, but at the end of the day, right, everyone dies. And worse, death is inescapable. Like, even if we burn really big boats, get those Wong Chuen going, we can never appease that hunger that death has for us. Christianity even has its own tragic young scholarly figure in Jesus Christ, a teacher who at 33 years of old experienced one of the most horrific violent deaths imaginable. But unlike Adam, whose sin allowed death to enter the world, Christ's righteousness gives us life. Scripture says, For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. So unlike the Wang Ye, Christ is not simply between a ghost and God, nor is Christ worshipped out of fear. Although they both do a lot of stuff on boats, I guess. In the Wang Ye, though, we see this fear-based transactional relationship. I mean, there's this reason that they keep putting them on boats and pushing them out to sea, and people won't even say the name of the Wang Ye. In Jesus, though, we see a grace-based relationship to people that have very little to actually offer back. <laughs> we actually see a God who keeps getting on boats to get closer to humanity because he loves them so much. So Christianity is pretty different from Taiwanese folk religion, but we do have someone who brought kind of a plague upon humanity. And we have someone who, through his virtuous sacrifice, is able to solve that problem. But unlike Taiwanese folk religion, it's not a quid pro quo extorting relationship. If anything, we wouldn't want to put Jesus on a boat and send him away like a hot potato. We'd want Jesus to come as close as possible. And the best part is he actually offers that sort of relationship to humanity. Thank you for joining Pilgrimage Films. Please smash that like button, like just slap it in the face. And please, if these videos have helped you at all, share it with somebody or subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers, not to get monetized, but because we want people to actually watch the stuff that we pour our blood, sweat, and tears into. Specifically, the media team like Hailey and M, who spend hours and hours slaving away just so that we can get 90 views. That sounds like it's baking, I'm not baking. Am I baking? Leave us a comment, tell us about your plague stories. Okay, most people don't like stories. Subscribe. Am I saying plague or plague? I hope I didn't say plague the whole time.